Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. I'm still excited by my fantastic spoken Igbo. I don't care what anybody says. My Igbo was 10 over 10. All right, we have with us our favorite political analyst here in the studio. We're looking at what's trending on the news. And I think we should give him a round of applause for how fantastic he looks. It's a good chukudi in the building. It's deserve, good to have you. I deserve some accolades. You're paying your dues, bro. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, Thank you. why? Thank you. Happy... Happy Women Wednesday. Wednesday. How are you? I'm very, very So fine. what inspired your look today? Well, you know, Nigeria has a rich cultural heritage. Mm. You know, people of different ethnic backgrounds with a rich history. And I always try as much as I can to identify with my brothers and sisters. And I mean, a tall person can never do wrong <laughs> in any outfit. Wow, a wow, tall, wow, a, wow, A tall, dark, and a... Handsome-looking man. <laughs> the handsome might not be really sure. So you're really... not sure you're handsome? Well, if my mom says I'm handsome, I don't think anybody else can dispute that fact. But you know some people, uh, beauty... Is in the uh, eyes of the beholder. No, for some people, beauty is in the eyes of the beer holder. Oh, wow. For other people, beauty is in the eyes of the sound that the ATM machine The bill holder. Gives. Yes, when it's bill. dispensing cash. Yeah. So for some people, when you hear you that look like Kunta Kunte, you all of a sudden begin to look like Ramsinoa. Interesting. Money is powerful. Chukudi, there's no way I'm going to go into tra today's training stories without setting you up with hmm. what I did. So hmm. can you briefly, you know, introduce yourself and talk about what you do here in okay. your native dialect? Okay. Afa Muezu Guchukudi. Okay. Afa Muezu State. Unsuka local government area to be precise. Uh, I'm, I'm a political analyst. Uh, all the uh, politics they mean in Nigeria, I analyze yeah, yeah, one after the other. Uh, ofu, ofu, one after the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> 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 Let me end with that. <laughs> well done. Thank you. That was good. Thank you. All right, let's go straight to what's happening in the news. Now, we reported what happened in Ekiti State last week, the a few days ago, the elections. And we talked about the fact that there's been several reports as to it being marred by election um, fraudulence. Let me put it that way. Now, the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project on Tuesday urged the Independent National Electoral Commission to investigate and prosecute perpetrators of alleged vote buying in Saturday's governorship election in Ekiti. Executive Director of the organization, Mr. Adetokumbo Mumuni, said, in a statement that a letter on the demand had been sent to the chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, saying that Serap would institute a suit against the commission if it failed to comply. Chukudi, a lot of people were very um, excited about the fact that the Ekiti state elections would have been an indication of how 2019 elections would be. A lot of us were waiting to see. Now, from what we've seen at the Ekiti elections, what does it tell us of 2019 elections? And this suit that they're instituting against, um, against INEC, you know, is it really going to make any change? Is it going to make any move? I think Serap has done a lot. When we speak about organizations that, you know, do advocacy and are at the forefront, you know, Serap will always come first because sure. I recall that, you know, they went to, went to the courts and, um, you know, got a ruling against the federal government to publish the names of those that, you know, had looted funds and those that had returned. Now, one, way, one thing is to get a ruling. The other is to enforce compliance, especially when you're dealing with the federal government that is alpha and omega in quotes. Now, the biggest takeaway from the incident in Ekiti State is the fact that political parties or unscrupulous elements or members of the political class have weaponized poverty in the sense that people are hungry and would jump at anything. And so when you, when you starve people, and you want to use it to an advantage when it comes to general elections, it's a major problem. And I think on the one hand, while Serap goes to court to compel the federal government and the Independent National Electoral Commission, for example, to take an action on this matter, what other advocacy groups must do is to go to town and let Nigerians understand that if you sell your vote, you're selling your conscience, and you're leaving yourself at the mercy of a wicked political office holder that will treat you in a manner that is not befitting of somebody who should be enjoying the dividends of democracy. Now, we have a situation where a governor has not been able to pay salaries to his civil servants for seven, five months. And on the eve of the election day, they are receiving alerts. Civil servants are receiving alerts with the designation, uh, it's a government stipend. You begin to, you, you ask yourself, how do we get to this law? There are several states in Nigeria that should not be states. They should be business centers because they are not doing anything whatsoever. There's no creativity in government, no responsibility. And you have people presiding over the administrative affairs and running the state aground. 
We hope that Nigerians will begin to understand that playing a part in government and governance is not just waiting on election day. But you ask questions, you educate yourselves, you speak to people, and we take a stand. If we look at what has happened in Ekiti State as a micro or macro of what will happen in 2019... I was going to ask you, what, what are very, the projections? I am very sorry. Because people would jump at anything. It was reported that this party was paying 4000 the other party was paying 5000 It was just the highest In bigger. fact, I don't know where I saw a caption. Someone said, oh, if they paid you 5000 I'm sure you spent 1000 Naira. Please make sure that you spend remaining 4000 with care. I it's mean, unfortunate that we actually have a poverty problem on our hands. But you could the truth is, the elites are the ones that know that they should not do this. They should not sell their votes. How do we get the word out there to the lower class to understand that you sell your vote out there, you're selling not just your, your life, your future, that of your children, as well for the next four years. Well, the truth is, when you look at certain members of the political class, like they say, all is fair in war and politics. The only end goal is to perpetuate themselves in power, and they will do all that they can. That is why people would empower, in quote, empower young people with weapons to go out and wreak havoc because you want to gain an advantage on election day. That is why people indulge or engage in ballot snatching, vote rigging, just because they want to desperately assume power or perpetuate themselves in power. Now, the people must understand that sovereignty resides with the people and all the powers emanating thereof. It is our responsibility to play a part. And that's the very essence of democracy. The microscopic few that preside over the affairs of state do so in our interest. If they do not do so in our interest, then we have to kick them out of government. And when they are there, we have to hold them accountable and responsible because they are working for us. I have no business with the way you run your family. I have no business with the way you run your personal estate. But if it is government and whatever you use in administering the affairs is from the public purse, then you must be answerable to the public. Now, we need to have a situation where Nigerians must understand that just like in every other part of the world where things work, things can work in Nigeria. And Nigeria is a country that is abundantly blessed with human and natural resources. The only mistake we make is we turn to God or some sort of divine help to address practical problems. There is no power. You have people who just look at it and say, ah, these people will need power. And they come up with the, I better pass my neighbor generator. At the end of the day, there are people that would not even want us to have power in Nigeria because they are exploiting That is why it. I've told you. Exactly. When they say that, they know you cannot afford this one. Let's give you, I better pass my neighbor generator. I mean, so that you can do shakara. As well. You that you are a poor man, can do shakara for a poor man because you turn on your generating set. Now, what Nigerians must understand is we live in a country where all we need to do is to get <clears throat> things right. And when we get things right, we begin to really and truly enjoy the dividends of democracy.